Okay, so welcome back from the lunch. So, my presentation is a conceptual talk about the population dynamics and drivers behind changes in population dynamics might, that might pose risks from the perspective of fisheries. So specifically, I'm talking about the importance of uncertainty and understanding sources of uncertainty in population dynamics and focusing on two case studies. The other one will be on the alley effects and the second one will be on environmental recruitment variability. So the kind of big reason why I'm studying this kind of questions is that it is kind of fact that many fish stocks have declined drastically over the past decades, but at the same time we haven't seen much recovery. Maybe I should just wait for half a minute so you can sit down. <laughs> so, Atlantic Cod is a very famous study system on studying the population collapse and recovery because, as probably many fisheries scientists know, there was in the Western Atlantic huge declines in the cod abundance, formerly very sustainable fishery, and after the closure of fishery, there were many predictions that fish stocks should actually recover fairly soon based on the traditional density-dependent population dynamics. But what happened was below all the expectation and all the revised predictions, populations did not actually recover, but they stayed at the low abundance despite of very low fishing pressure. So it seems that traditional population dynamics models and the traditional assumptions about the compensatory population growth are not quite holding in the cod population dynamics. So somehow they failed to predict the probability of huge decline on the cod population abundance owing to fishing, and on the other hand, they failed to predict the lack of recovery. At this point, I'm also drawing attention to the conservation biological point of view. So when we look at the recovery, actually, what we actually need to focus on the population dynamics is the per capita population growth rate, because this is a universal correlate of recovery ability and inversely extinction risk. So looking at that quantity, we know quite a lot about the recovery ability of the population at low abundance. So following these ideas, I want to draw attention to a recent paper called Coasts of Fisheries Induced Depletion. Do they haunt us still? This is a little paper where we summarized a few beliefs that seem to be very long persisting in the fisheries science context, but don't necessarily have very strong empirical backup. So the questions I'm focusing here is the alley effect, and it seems that in, in a lot of in fisheries context, people seem to feel that alley effects are not necessarily much of a problem, problem, but population dynamics are assumed to be strongly compensatory, so at the low abundance they should grow fast. And on the other hand, there are, people, there are assumptions that populations that show high variability in the juvenile production should be able to recover fairly fast because they are able to then use the empty space in the population abundance and on the very good years fill it up. So, the structure of this talk will be following. I will first have a very quick glance about the theoretical approach here, so the simulation model that I'll, I will use to describe fish population dynamics, the dynamics of life histories and what comes out in the population demography. And then I'm focusing on these two case studies, the role of alley effect on population recovery and the impacts of increasing environmental variability in recruitment on the resilience and recovery ability of the population. So, very briefly starting about the model. So this is individual-based, process-based model. It means that I follow every single individual in the population and at each time step, I track the population at every year and at each time step for every individual I model the processes of mortality, growth, maturity and reproduction. And I go through all the individuals, then time increases with one step and I go back again. And these processes take level at the level of individuals because then phenotypic traits can affect the outcome of the processes. And secondly, it's important to be able to account for the demographic variability in the population dynamics. Now that the life history invariants have come already to the up in this, in this 
symposium. So this model also in utilizes the life history invariants. So the different traits of one single individual are based on the life history invariants. So I model the individuals through von Bertalan for growth curves. And I assume the strong negative correlation between the growth parameter and the asymptotic length. And the other invariant, the ratio of length at maturity and the asymptotic length is also utilized. So in other words, when I know about the L infinity of the individual, I can determine its growth constant and it, the timing and the size at maturation. This is practically more all, all that I'm going to tell about the model because the model has been utilized already in several publications and its parameterization and the structures have been well peer-reviewed. So now I'm here, here focusing on the applications. And the first application is the Alley effect. So in other words, depensation in the fisheries literature as opposed to compensation, that means that the density dependence is supporting population growth at the low abundance. So under, density under the compensation, when abundance declines, we should have increases in per capita growth rate. But if we have alley effects, so depensatory population dynamics, what happens when the abundance declines? We first have weakening of compensation, so still compensation, but it's weakening, and then it is turning downwards into alley effect. So it's important to notice that we don't necessarily have always evidence of alley effect, so the ter turning, the, the positive abundance and growth rate relationship, but it is indirect evidence of alley effect likely to be there when we see the weakening of the compensation. And when we look at the alley effect at the level of population growth rate, this weakening in the growth rate, this is called demographic alley effect. So this is an emerging property. It is a sum of all the factors affecting population demography and making the realized rate of population growth. And this opposes to the component alley effects, which are the mechanisms underlying the emerging alley effect. So this can be lower juvenile survival at the low abundance, lower fertilization rates, practically anything that affects fitness related traits. But here, I'm just looking at the demographic alley effect and just bearing in mind that different processes can cause it and I'm not taking a stand whether, it, whether it's an ecosystem change or environmental change manifesting at the different abundances. It's simply the question that there has to be the abundance interaction with the effect. So coming back to the cord, the lack of recovery suggests that Perhaps alley effect is not entirely uncommon there, or it can actually explain some of the pattern. Potential mechanisms that might have caused the alley effect could be changes in predator-prey interactions, which is known to have happened. There is lots of seals and they are eating quite a bit of cod. And there could also be environmental effects mani manifested only at very low abundances that has been observed, for instance, in the North Sea. And there could be simply ecosystem shifts. So if ecosystem shift happens at the low abundance, that is actually a mechanism of alley effect. What I did here, I utilized empirical estimates of alley effect on Atlantic cod. So these come from the RAM legacy database, where my colleague Dave Keith fitted a hierarchical model and estimated relative reproductive success at different abundances. So these are spawning stock biomasses as percentage of carrying capacity. And it actually seemed that COD does show alley effect. So there's first compensatory dynamics until going to 10 to 20 percentage, but when population abundance declines below 10 percentage, then the reproductive success crashes. So there is actually empirical evidence on alley effect on Atlantic COD. And now to explore this simulation-wise, what I did, I looked at this documented alley effect, then I took as a, as a compensatory example, I looked at the compensation. So this was a forced compensation model fitted to the data, so omitting this one last data point. And then I took an intermediate, a flat scenario. It's not very realistic, but it's there to just explore the three different options and, and one in between. So the simulation design I applied. I was fishing the population, simulated population, with trawling selectivity. The idea was at first that I simulated population in equilibrium, then I induced fishing, then I fished until it had declined until 5% of the carrying capacity, then the fishing was stopped and I allowed populations to recover, and I simply followed how the recovery happened. And now the alley effect is the red one, and the compensation and the intermediate flat scenario are green and black. When the fishing started, populations declined until Fishing was stopped at the 5 percentage, 
And then the populations bounced back in the case of compensation and flat effect pretty st steadily. But in case of alley effect, there was huge variability among the recovery trajectories. So what it actually meant is that in case of alley effect, populations could recover fairly fast, but it could take 100 years more to recover, to rebuild back to the carrying capacity. And this was reflected, obviously, to population growth rates. So in case of flat and compensation scenario, they were on positive side, but in case of alley effect, they were fluctuating around zero. And if estimating now the impact, if summarizing it, at the time it took to, re to rebuild the biomass, just 25 percentage, 50 and 75 percentage of biomass from the carrying capacity. So these are the times it took to recover in years for the different three different scenarios, alley, flat and compensation. And it's pretty obvious that looking at this box plot that obviously alley effect increased the recovery time but the height of the box plot increased massively also. So alley effect increased the uncertainty about the recovery time. Usually, of course, we can't completely stop fishing that was done in this simulation. There will always be at least bycatch. So I also explored the same simulations with just having very, very low fishing mortality, so kind of representative of bycatches, despite cod would not be targeted in the fisheries. And when this kind of little fishing mortality was induced, then actually in the case of alley effect, none of the populations managed to recover. So it was just this little twisting in the fishing mortality that prevented the recovery completely. So this pattern actually looks very similar to what has been seen in Atlantic cod. So as a conclusion, in this study, what we found out is that alley effect slows down the recovery. This is not surprising because it will decrease the population growth rate. But what was more surprising is that early effect increases the uncertainty of recovery. And of course, the intuitive conclusion is that the best ways to avoid the adverse consequences of the early effect is simply to keep the population above, ab 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 abundance above the level below which the early effect is manifested. So in this case, in cod, just keep the abundance about 10% each, and the problem won't arise. Then the second case study. This used very similar, similar simulation design. So again, having these populations in equilibrium, then fishing, then letting them to recover. But now the focus was on environmentally driven recruitment variability. So now I emphasize here that when I talk about recruitment variability, I'm not repeating this environmental driven all the time, but I'm meaning recruitment variability that is unrelated to spawning stock biomass. So the variability that comes from the nature outside, so not population abundance, but simply the environmental stochasticity about the stock recruitment function. And when coming back to the basics of what kind of environmental patterns we might see, we have the white noise, so completely unautocorrelated, just normally distributed noise, so one year doesn't depend on the previous year. Then it's the red noise that would link to the regimes, productivity regimes. So there's auto positive autocorrelation so that good years might come in the clusters and bad years would come in the clusters as well. So productivity regimes are pretty commonly talked in fisheries context and that's why both the white and, and the red noise might be kind of realistic scenarios of what kind of variability we might see. Blue noise is the negative autocorrelation and perhaps not as common. And the simulation design here, I first utilized, again, empirically estimated in estimates on environmental variability in juvenile production. So I looked at time series and variability from one year to another in the juvenile production after controlling for the population abundance. And this again came from RAM legacy database and utilized 18 cod stocks, both sides of Atlantic. And after that, I utilized the same simulation model. I simulated population dynamics during fishing and during recovery. And the output, I looked at the population resilience to fishing and the recovery ability. And these two I measured by, measure, by calculating how long it takes that the population sustains fishing before it collapses. And after it has collapsed, how long it takes for the population to recover. And these are the cord stocks summarized in this table. This column SD here is the standard deviation from year to year variation. And the number doesn't here mean much anything because it's standardized. But it sort of tells that looking at the highest variability, the North Sea, compared to the lowest ones, 
so the beer bank, there is about one order of magnitude difference. So definitely populations show different levels of environmental variability. So there's just not one scenario of environmental variability for cod, but it's reasonable to explore different scenarios. So what I did, I extracted three different scenarios. I looked at average amount, then low, being represented with 25 percentage quantile of these SDs, and then high 75 percentage. It's notable that these quantiles, these are just 70 and 25, 25 and 75 percentage quantiles, so these are not extremes actually. These are very kind of modest levels of low or high variability. We also looked at the autocorrelation, whether there's evidence for white or red noise, and about half of the stocks showed no autocorrelation, and the rest of the stocks showed some autocorrelations with a lack of one year. So these two scenarios were included as well. Here's just an example how the population dynamics looks when we look at the average amount of environmental variability as opposed to just the demographic. So the demographic variability is in red and the environmental on the top of red, top of the demographic is added so that the black resembles this variation. And obviously in the recruitment the variability is large. Uh, but what it, how it translates to the population abundance, so here is the biomass to carrying capacity ratio. So we can have just by chance like 10 percentage declines in the population abundance simply because of the environmental noise in the recruitment. And same population in the population growth rate. So there was quite a bit of variability induced now when just having more environmental noise about the demographic variability. And when I went further, I summarized now the duration of fishing until population was considered to be collapsed and the duration of 50 percentage biomass rebuild. Now here on the x-axis I have these different scenarios, so no recruitment variability, low average or high. What was interesting is that median duration of fishing and the median recovery the times, they don't much differ between the variability scenarios. But where we actually see the pattern is again the uncertainty. So Duration of fishing, there the uncertainty declines as a function of environmental variability. So the higher the variability, the more certain we are that we can't fish for very long. And opposite is true with the case of recovery. The more there is environmental variability, the more uncertain we are how long it takes for the population to recover. These simulations are without the autocorrelation, and when I added the autocorrelation, the pattern actually got stronger. So we see this declining amount of variability in the case of duration of fishing and then increasing in case of the rebuild time. So the article that resulted from this study, the title summarizes well the main finding. Increased environmental, environmentally driven recruitment variability decreases resilience to fishing and increases the uncertainty of recovery. So again, completely similarly as in the case of the alley effect, we see this effect mostly in the uncertainty about the population behavior, not in the average population behavior. So both these case studies draw the attention to not just understand the average population dynamics, but how different processes can actually increase or decrease the variability about the dynamics and how to perhaps include that to the Bayesian model structures, so not have the variability as a constant about the process, but actually have it as a function of the underlying process that we are interested to incorporate. So that's where I throw the challenge and conclude here. Thank you. Thank you.